Hey guys, Mark Farashi, ProTech Dog Training with Pim. And uh, he's my special little pandemic dog. We haven't had the, ch the chair out here before, so that's kind of cool. He's just checking it out. All right, so I wanted to kind of overview what we've got going on with Pim, and I've talked about it before, just so you know, and, and then co go over some of the, the key points and things I'm going to do and I am doing to try to get him to come out of the situation. He was a pandemic lockdown dog, so his owner had him in the backyard, no telling what they went through with the COVID situation, but he got stuck in the backyard. So he lacks any exposure to environment. So in his state of mind, when he goes out, is everything is, is um, dictated by uh, anxiety, fear, uh, a hyper sense of awareness of everything that's out in front of him, and, and fear. So we've got to change that with time. And one of the first things that you see me doing, I do it with my puppies. I do it with a lot of my puppy imprinting and things like that is what we call sacking out the dog. What I call sacking out the dog. It comes, that terminology comes from the horse industry. And I was born and raised around horses and, and around horses as a kid and wild and uh, farm life. You know what I mean? I grew up in a, a very rural area and got to experience a lot of things that are just like I am now, way out in the boonies. Right, I'm used to this. This is where I'm, where I'm comfortable. Um, that being the case, um, we have something that was termed in, in horses when you're dealing with colts. A horse is a flight animal. They want to take off. They're a lot more skittish. They're not a prey animal. They hunt anything. They just graze and then any danger, they run, right? So they're a lot more skittish in their whole, whole behavior. So when you're working with colts, when they're young, they're very skittish and very afraid of everything. So you do what's called sacking out the animal with the objective of teaching the colt to get a saddle put back on it, on its back, a, a blanket, a sa saddle. Um, this object that's coming through towards the horse is going to scare the heck out of that little young colt. So they have a term called sacking the colt out. And they take a gunny sack. It's a really loose piece of garment. And they have a lot of gunny sacks around the farm and farm uh, application. So they, that's where they came up with it. And they will take it and they will sh shake it off away from the colt and they'll let them get a little skittish of it and they'll work the, the animal through it. Slow but sure. Just keep doing it. Let them sniff it. Rub it on the colt's back. Get the animal to a point where they can end up shaking this and throwing that gunny sack on the sack. Then it goes to the blanket. Then it goes to the saddle, right? They're trying to get to the animal to a point where they can put a saddle on the animal, right? So they call that stage sacking the, the horse out. And they do it with wild animals as well. Good boy. Good. You want some? You want some? So that being the case, that's where the term comes from that I use called the sacking out the puppies, sacking out a dog. This is what we're doing with him. I'm going into environmental. I'm going out to tractor supply and going out to places that he may be a little bit more. Right now I'm using the, the park and I'm using that one spot, same place, same location to get the dog used to uh, and have confidence with that location. But I'm sacking him out. I'm going over to the trash cans and I'm, hey, up, yay, up. I'm taking the lid and I'm making noises and I'm, I'm working him through it slow but sure. And I'm sacking the animal out to a point where he becomes accustomed to all that and that will become blasé and he'll be bomb proof in that environment but we have a dog that's very um hyper aware and a lot of fear and a lot of trepidation which is a very sad state of my state of mind for the animal to be in hup, hup. so that's the first thing we're doing the next thing we're doing is we're going to get him he's always worried he's always got a worried state of mind he's not as worried here because this is his comfortable area when we go out in public, he is, or out into the park, he is. He's, he sees people. He's right away afraid of everything. So now we brought a toy into it. So look at this guy. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Now watch the dog's body language. He's happy. For that one-tenth of a si si time, we did this yesterday. He's a lot better today out here than he was yesterday. So for one, ah, good boy, good. Yeah, good boy, good. Come on, come on. There you go. Good boy. For one-tenth of a second, and in this time period, his mind switches to a happy state. And that's what I'm after. I'm out to get the dog into a happy happy state of mind, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, go, oh, 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 go boy, and get him high on this toy. So now I have a ability to toggle him from that worried state of mind and from that fear state of mind into one of happiness. And the more I do this, the more I bring this out as an answer and he gets to flip to this happy state of mind, he will start, start, hopefully, this is our goal, get it, get it, get it, get it, to get to that point where he is now in a happy state of mind and we now teach him to stay in that state of mind for longer and longer. That's the goal, right? Will we overcome this fear state? Will we overcome it? I don't think you'll ever overcome it with a dog like this. You can make it a lot better. 
you have something to work with. You have a baseboard to start, like I said, talking about booting up the computer, right? We have something to build on and now we can take it somewhere. So what I'll do is like I'm doing right now, I'm at home right now. I didn't go to the park because he is such in a state of fear of mind. I need to build this type of attitude first. So I'm gonna go walking down my road. That's my first pattern, right? When I took him out, when I first started walking him down the road. Yeah, you bite my leg, I'm gonna be mad at you. He's chomping on that thing. He's chomping on that thing. Yeah, good boy, good. Yeah, that bobby's. But he's getting a lot, lot better with me. I now have a lot more better baseboard to work. And look what he does when he hears the sound. Get it, get it, get it. Sound takes his brain to another place. Then the, then the, the drive of, of Chase going after the prey object, right? He's got all these drives to be able to work with. And now I've got him sacked out with me where he's got this and this is all positive to him now, huh? Yeah, good boy, because of my relationship with the dog, right? Out. Good boy, Bubba's. Out, out, good, that's my boy, good, there you go, good. So we're just gonna go walk down the road today, keep it very friendly, I'm gonna do this a couple, two or three times, and then once I get a little bit better baseboard here where he's comfortable, he's used to it, then we'll go to the park again. And we'll touch on these nerves, these nerve spots that he has, that his mind goes to a different state of mind. And we'll keep working him through it. How well he does is going to be up to me and how good I am, but also where the dog, character-wise, everything else, can I get him to another state of mind where he starts to live in another state of mind versus living in this fear and aware, hyper-awareness and, and uh, mental malaise that he's in that stew that his brain his whole body and attitude stays in we want it out of there and that's what we're trying to work on and as we go along with time with a, a lot of uh understanding the dog's nature and working on it will get him there that's why i said this isn't a dog that i would say is going to be done in 30 days 60 90 days and even then get it get it get it it's always going to be a part of him how much can we get him through it depends on how good i am and I think taking him up and drive towards bite works would be another thing to get him through some of this. Um, it's going to take some work there. He's going to have to do the bite work with me and be going in the sleeve. It's going to be a game. Yeah, good boy. Go, 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 boy. Good. Yeah. I want him touching my body. I want him to feel confident that I'm not going to correct him when he's here, right? Because I want him up and I always do my training center mass, right? So we're going to take this into sleeves and some other things. Right now, we're just trying to get him to a point where he starts to chill out a little bit his frame of mind his whole state of mind goes from that one of fear and trepidation and uh over encompassing awareness of the environment that freaks him out and takes him to a different place and that's why i'm letting him experience this here good boy good yeah yeah no, boy, I was, look at him look at him i'm loving this he's getting a lot better with this relationship with me and this is what it's all about this is the crux of everything because this is what's going to take him through teaching him that i've got him i'm there for him good boy good get it get it get it get it go get it, boy yeah good boy good boy good that's my boy yeah you good boy good you good boy are you good huh yes you are i'm loving what i'm seeing here Remember, guys, in the end, no matter what you're doing with training, everything starts with a relationship, all right? It's real important. All right, I'll let you guys go. Mark Farash, your protect dog training, trying to do as I normally do, yak the screen to show you some things so you learn and grow. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.